Hi, this is Katherine Skinner of the Educopia Institute. This workshop recording and all of its accompanying material is openly and freely available as part of a research project undertaken by the Educopia Institute in partnership with Carnegie Mellon University, Colorado State University, Indiana State University, the Morehouse School of Medicine, Oregon State University, Penn State University, Purdue University, the University of Louisville, the University of North Texas, the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, and Virginia Tech University. It has been generously funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This workshop has been designed to provide you with the resources and tools you need to help you to know how to handle copyright, both for your own works and then also for those works that you use, cite, or reference in your work. This workshop is part of a six workshop series on topics related to the preservation and curation of research data and complex digital objects. You can access the workshops and their accompanying briefs at https colon slash slash educopia.org slash research slash etd plus. So by way of a little bit more context for this series, a decade ago, electronic theses and dissertations used to be PDFs. But increasingly today, students are reporting that non-PDF files are either just as or are more important research outputs and evidence. So in that context, how do you make sure that your research outputs, not just your PDF, but also all of your other outputs are protected by copyright? How do you make sure that your research outputs don't infringe upon existing copyrights? And how can copyright help you or someone else to use and build upon your research outputs in the future? As a researcher in an academic environment, understanding copyright basics can help you to share and protect your work effectively and purposefully. The decisions you make now about copyright are going to have implications for your work, including how it can be built upon in the future. So as you work on your thesis or dissertation, it's useful to build a basic understanding of two key aspects of copyright. First, how copyright impacts your ability to include others' works within your own including those you've collaborated with to produce or those that you've already published. And then how decisions that you make about your own copyright may impact the future of your own research outputs. In other words, you need to know how to recognize and use copyrighted materials that are produced by others or that have been produced by you in the past. And you know, need to know how to register and manage the copyright for your own work. There are many guides and resources available to students regarding copyright that can help you evaluate and select from a range of options that are available to you, and many of those we reference herein. This workshop focuses specifically on some of the decisions that you may need to make regarding the materials that you've created or used in your research process, including drawings and photographs, tables and charts, lab notes and data sets, interviews and newscasts, uh, software and digital artworks. It describes in non-legal language the basics of a few important terms, including fair use, public domain, and creative commons, as they may apply to these materials. The failure to consider the implications of different copyright approaches for your own work can limit the impact of your work. Failure to adequately review, vet, and seek permission to use others' work can, in a worst case scenario, prevent your work from getting published, or in rare cases, could even lead to legal actions. And I'll note that is in rare cases. Let me say that again, that that, that legal action is really the least of your concerns. Um, ultimately, you want to make sure that you are, are doing the right thing, not in order to avoid legal actions, but in order to make sure that your work is getting used appropriately and that you're using others' work appropriately. So now with that in mind, let's review the learning objectives that we've got for this workshop. So the first is to learn when to seek appropriate permission to use existing works. And those existing works extend to works that you've created and published previously. Uh, the second is I want you to learn ways that you can establish and signal the copyright for your own works. And then finally, I want you to learn what research outputs are and are not copyrighted automatically. So let's start with a couple of definitions. And we're gonna look at three definitions total. Two of them are on this slide, one is on the next slide, and those are for US copyright, for public domain, and for fair use. 
So U.S. copyright is simply a legal tool that authors and creators use to signal what other people can or can't do with their works. Okay, so copyright is extremely extensive. You can describe all kinds of things with copyright, but ultimately it's a tool and it's a tool that's been created for authors and creators. So this is something that is, is intended to be used by you as an author, as a creator, to designate what others can do with your works. Now, a second term that you'll hear often with copyright and with intellectual property issues is the term public domain. So public domain simply means works that are not limited by copyright, works that can be freely used by anyone. So usually a work will enter the public domain once a defined period of copyright protection has lapsed. Others may enter the public domain from the beginning of their creation, depending on what the author and creator designates and intends as they put it out there. So particularly in scholarly circles, uh, at this moment in time, there are a lot of movements towards what we call commons, and we'll talk a little bit about creative commons in a few slides, uh, which is a legal approach that, that is, uh, is invested in the idea of open and reusable um, content and making that designation possible in a copyright uh, environment. And scholarly commons are becoming more and more a topic of not just conversation, but of creation. And so hopefully over the course of your careers, you will have the opportunity not just to use public domain works that have had copyright uh, expire in essence, um, where it's entered the public domain after a lapse of time, but also you'll be able to both use and potentially produce content that goes directly into the public domain in, in your intention as a creator. So a third topic or a third uh, term that you're gonna come into contact with likely a lot is the term fair use. So especially in academic environments, knowledge environments, if you use a work that's within copyright, but that meets certain quote unquote fair use criteria, Courts have found that no formal permission is needed. So those, those criteria include things like the purpose of your, uh, your work. So if you are using content for educational and research uses, that favors fair use, while commercial uses do not. Um, the type of content. So for example, is this factual content or nonfiction-based information? Those may favor fair use. If it's highly creative work, it likely will not favor fair use. A third uh, fair use criteria is the amount. So are you using small quantities versus a significant portion of the original work? If you're using small quantities, that may favor fair use. If you're using significant portions, it likely won't. And then finally, the effect. So if the effect of your use is no negative impact on the copyright holder, that's more likely to favor fair use, whereas if your, your use of it has a negative impact on the copyright holder, that's less likely to, uh, to produce that, uh, to, to favor fair use, um, to fall under fair use. And for more information, you can go to the URL that's listed here. You'll also find this in other materials that are available at the URL that I provided on the second slide and that we'll also wrap up with. Um, which is where this whole series of workshops, guidance briefs, and handouts uh, live. So one of the key things that you want to think about whether you, whenever you're using works by another person um, is the copyright concerns that that may uh, imply. So if the works are in the public domain or if they're covered clearly under the auspices of fair use, you may use the works and just provide credit. But if the works are not in the public domain or if they're not clearly covered under fair use, giving credit is simply not enough. You also have to request permission. How and where you do that depends on the works that are involved. So some aggregators like the Copyright Clearance Center may facilitate that process for you if they manage the copyright of the work that you wanna cite. But otherwise you may find yourself needing to track down and contact an author or an artist or their publisher or their agent or their label or their estate to seek permission. And one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you is don't go at this alone. You have a library on your campus and you have wonderful resources in the librarians there who have deep expertise in copyright and intellectual property 
and they can help to guide you through this process. So if in doubt, make sure that you reach out to your library and identify who the right people are to talk to there about your intellectual property and copyright concerns. So how do you actually use copyright? Um, copyright for certain types of works that you create or author are going to automatically belong to you, which is great news. You don't have to do a thing to declare that copyright. It's yours whether you declare it or not. And this extends to literary works. So think about that creative use that we were talking about on the last slide. Literary works, musical works, dramatic works, um, the uh, kind of pantomimes and choreography of dance. Um, pictorial or graphic and sculptural work, motion pictures, uh, audiovisual works, sound recordings, and architectural works. All of these things are covered under copyright, again, whether you ask for that or file for that or not. But there are some pieces that you do have to actually take action and signal your copyright on. So copyright may not extend to some of the research outputs that you're going to produce as part of your thesis or dissertation. So for example, data is only thinly protected by copyright. And so anytime that you're putting out uh, a data, a data set, a data dictionary, all of the different components that you have produced, make sure that you designate some sort of license. And we highly recommend the CC, Creative Commons licenses, which are well documented on the web. Uh, and the one that I would most highly recommend is CC BY, which means people have to cite you, but they can use your work as long as they do so. Um, now, you may have reason to want to protect your content more than that. And so there are ways to designate that no commercial use can be made of it, or even that no use and reuse can be made of it at all. So there, there is a broad range of CC uh, licenses that can help you as you're trying to signal your copyright on particular outputs such as data. So a little bit more about Creative Commons. This set of licenses is available freely to copyright owners and it's well recognized as I mentioned. So what these licenses ultimately do is they put into plain language a set of legal constraints, including when a user needs to seek permission from the copyright holder, how the works user should credit the original copyright holder, and what types of uses, including, as I mentioned on the last slide, commercial versus non-commercial, are permissible. So for more on that, go to creativecommons.org. It's a great resource. It's well organized. It's easy to use. So as the author of a work, the copyright for your thesis or dissertation that you write is going to automatically belong to you, whether or not you've chosen to officially register it with the US Copyright Officer, or Office. So the, the written text that we think of most often as the ETD is going to be automatically copywritten. Now that may not be the case for code, for data, for other pieces that are just as important and are integral to your work, um, but for that main piece, it, it does exist. Sometimes it's still worth it to register copyright. So for example, if a computer science student is creating a code base that has potential for commercial release, the protection of that student's interest may include both registering the copyright for the code and patenting that invention. Sometimes it makes more sense to establish a CC license. So for example, a poli-sci student may be producing a data set that would benefit other researchers, including journalists. Releasing that data set with a license that clearly explains how and when it can be used will enable others to replicate or build upon it without concern. So registering your copyright and labeling with the symbol and the year of the first publication and the name of the owner of the copyright is a really good way to make sure that people know what they can and can't do and how to cite the, uh, the work itself. There are loads of resources on copyright um, and they are uneven at best. These are three that I think are, are highly recommendable um, and many others in the field would agree with that. So NCA's best practices and fair use in scholarly research, CAA's Code of Best Practices and Fair Use for the Visual Arts, and Cornell University's Fair Use Checklist are all uh, resources that you'll see cited prevalently 
in materials on copyright that you can access on the web and also in articles, et cetera. So these are a few, there are more uh, resources available in the guidance brief that goes along with this workshop, which you can locate at the URL that was on the second slide or on the next slide. So with that, let's turn to this last slide and let's talk about some of the things that this provides. So this slide is intended to be kind of a, a handout. This is something that you can print out and carry with you if you want to. It's available again uh, at the URL below um, at the bottom of the, the page. And what you can uh, use this for is just to jog your memory on where some of these things are and what some of these things that we've talked about today mean. Three main issues that I hope you're familiar with at this point are first, how you can make sure that you gain appropriate permission to use existing works. Uh, a second one is that you know how to signal copyright for your own works. And then finally, I hope this has helped you to know some of what is and isn't copyrighted automatically. I wish you the best of luck and I appreciate you listening. Take care.